Have you ever been having a pretty good start to your day where the sun's streaming in through the windows, the coffee is brewing, the smell's hitting you just right, and then you look outside the window, you hit the street, or even more likely you start scrolling through Instagram, and then all of a sudden your heart stops because there it is. Someone looks like they have it more together than you. It could be that they bought a new car and even though you don't really need a new car right now, you're thinking, oh, but I want to be able to buy that one. Or maybe someone bought a new house and you're thinking, my rent's half my monthly income. How am I ever supposed to buy a new house? Whatever it is, it hits you deep and you're left thinking, wow, I'm so financially behind in life. Trust me, you're not alone in that feeling. One study found that even though people aged 24 to 41 are saving more money for their futures than before, more than half of millennials feel financially behind where they thought they'd be at their age. And that includes 39% of them that have incomes over $100,000. If so many people are feeling behind financially, even the ones that have these incomes that we'd consider pretty high, there's gotta be a reason for it, right? We think there's two reasons actually. And one goes back to that feeling we get when we see other people buying things and we tell ourselves that they have more money and therefore are happier than us. But we'll get back to that in a second. First, we need to start off with the very real concept that people are working more, but not seeing that work turn into more money. How is it that a young one income household in Toronto could save up for a 20% down payment in about five years in 1976, but now it's taking two income households more than five times as long? Our society has made a lot of money over the past few decades and we see it all around us. Everything's become bigger and better, so basically more expensive. There's been new technology, new innovation. The billionaires have basically doubled their wealth in the last two years alone. But what about the average person? Do they have any money? The short answer is no, they don't. And one of the easiest ways to show this is by looking at the gap between workers' productivity and their typical compensation. Now, what's interesting is that with the advancements in technology and the way that we work, productivity overall has actually gone up and is one of the main reasons behind all this wealth that's actually being created. But with workers being more productive, why don't we feel this wealth? Where is it actually going? Like I said, it's definitely not going to the employee. If we take a look at the US, for example, between the 1940s and the 1970s, productivity growth basically matched your compensation growth as well. So what that means is that if you grew your value to the company that you were working for by 5%, then your wages also matched that and grew by 5%. Talk about real motivation to actually you know, perform and do your job. Now, what sucks is that this isn't what's happening anymore. The gap has basically grown consistently and has become pretty extreme. We use this example in our middle class video, so check this. In 2017, a typical US worker made $25.15. Now, they would have made $33.10 had their salary matched their productivity. Now, of course, this isn't what's happening. And I think the natural question is that if well, if wealth is being created from employees and businesses being more productive and isn't going to the employees themselves, where is it actually going? The answer is actually pretty easy and we're seeing it directly in the stock market. We're talking about a company with a trillion dollar market cap. This is the first $3 trillion company trading in the US, probably trading in the world. I wanna thank every Amazon employee and every Amazon customer, because you guys paid for all of this. If we take a look at the companies themselves, we're seeing their values continue to grow and grow and grow. And I mean literally like at a rate that's higher than ever before in history. If we take a look at the total US stock market, for example, Overall, we're seeing like an upward trajectory with um, a lot of the company's valuations and we're seeing a rate of growth that's so much higher than past decades. Just crazy growth. Now, if we take a look at VTI specifically, it's gone up more than 200% since it started tracking the market back in 2001. Now, what this tells me is that a lot of US companies collectively have clearly gained a lot of wealth and a lot of money and a lot of, supposedly, a lot of value as well. Now, what's interesting is that if we take a look at that exact same time period, employee wages have clearly gone up significantly less, right? So what are we seeing here? We're seeing a whole bunch of companies that are clearly making a whole bunch of money and creating a whole bunch of wealth, but somehow that wealth and that money isn't making its way down to the employees. So where is it? Instead, it's staying with the people that actually own these companies. Now, the story doesn't actually stop there because we need to talk about what we mean when we say the people who own these companies. Now, you might be thinking that that means the CEO, the leadership team, the board, all the people who are somewhat actively involved in keeping the company running. And yes, those people do keep a lot of money for themselves. One example that we found of this is in 2020, how the CEOs of the top 350 firms in the US made an average of 24.2 million, which is over 350 times more the typical worker. But that's not everything that we mean. 
Ownership in the company also means the people who own stock in the company. The stock market going up represents companies gaining wealth, but at the same time, the stock market going up also means that the people who invested in those companies are gaining wealth too. And who owns the majority of stocks? Shockingly, it's not people with lower incomes or lower net worth. Stock ownership is correlated with higher incomes, and the wealthiest 10% of Americans own 89% of all US stocks. So that means that almost 90% of stocks belong to the top 10%, and only 10% of stocks belong to the bottom 90%. And it pretty much flows as you'd expect. So people with the lowest incomes own the least amount of stocks, people with middle incomes own a little bit more, and people with the highest incomes have a lot more. Here's the bottom line. Employees that are earning a set income, workers, have seen less wage growth than they have in the past. Now with prices rising due to inflation a lot higher than that income growth, it becomes harder and harder to afford the basics that you need in life, let alone to actually build up your wealth and buy some investments. At the same time that all that's happening, the stock market's been growing like crazy, which means that the divide between people who own stocks and people that don't is growing larger and larger. So there's your proof that some people really are behind financially when it comes to the broader market. And this is exactly why we're always saying on this channel that you need to be investing. Ideally, we wanna be making more than we spend, and then that money that we keep buying investments with it that ideally go up in value over time. Now, not only do people who have less money tend to own less stocks, but they also can have a harder time with some of the financial basics because of all the factors working against against them, like maintaining a good credit score. Now on today's video, we're working with Neo Financial again. You guys know I've been using the Neo Cashback credit card for about six months now and I've been loving it, but they also just came out with a new cash secured card. Now having a secured credit card basically means that you're depositing money down in order to open the credit card account up. So kind of think of it like a security deposit when you're renting an apartment. Now this is an option for anyone who's had a hard time with their credit history in the past because you're guaranteed to be approved for this card and there's also no hard credit check done. Now there is a minimum deposit of $50, which is nice because it's less than the typical amount required from other cards out there. Then after that, all the other perks are the same as the typical Neo card. So there's no annual fees, you get about 5% cash back at the Neo Financial Partners, and you also get a minimum of 1% cash back on all of your spending. Now also for your first purchases, there's up to 15% cash back, and you can start using those right away with the digital card on your app as soon as you open up an account. So we'll make sure we leave a link down below and also in our pinned comment too for you to check out the Neo Financial Cash Secured card. Okay, so now that we know that workers are earning less than the people who actually have ownership in the companies they work for, what we need to understand now is that that's only half the story. Sure, we can see, we can look at plenty of data that shows that people are feeling financially behind when they're comparing to past generations or the upper class who own the bulk of the wealth, but it does, it still doesn't really explain the emotional part. I mean, there's a lot of us that are feeling financially behind our friends and just people that are the same age as us who are technically in the same spot as us, assuming they're not in the upper class. And I think a lot of us are kind of left with the same question, right? A lot of us are wondering, why are we feeling financially behind when it comes to the people that are around us? Well, a lot of it has to do with the fact that we think we can see real wealth and real money. You know, you run into someone, they've got a fancy car or even a regular car, and you assume that they're better than you based on what you can see. Well, here's the thing, what you can't see is probably the fact that they've got a car loan, right? You don't know whether it's a huge financial regret right now or maybe even three years from now, you just don't know. Now, this is obviously just an example, but the main point here is that if you're consistently comparing yourself to others when you don't even know them or, their, or know their thoughts on their own purchases, then you're always gonna feel far behind. If you can, and I know it's easier said than done, just try and focus on yourself and the improvements that you've made in your life financially. Like for me, for example, it would have been really easy after paying off $45,000 in student loan debt in two and a half years to look at it as a negative. I could have been the person who said, you know what, my life sucks because I have a zero dollar net worth and everyone else has savings, everyone else has investments, whatever, you name it, right? Instead, there's got to be that mindset shift where you start looking at things a little bit differently, right? Like I looked at it as, wow, I'm reflecting on what happened before. I was able to pay off $45,000, right? Like I, I had a negative net worth before. I was, I was so happy to have a zero dollar net worth. And now I'm not saying that I didn't think that way sometimes where you know, you're looking at the negative, it's just human nature, but you gotta have that mindset shift. Overall, what's your goal and what's the big picture that you have for yourself? Always remind yourself of that because at the end of the day, what drives you, that's always gonna make you feel better. When you're feeling behind or you're feeling left behind, that should be a temporary feeling where once you refocus yourself, you know, you're good. Okay, so here's where we've landed. Obviously, a lot of people are feeling financially behind. And you know what? It's not gonna be stopped by people just making more money and spending less money. 
it has to include using the money that you keep to invest and own assets. And when you realize that you need to invest in order to catch up, it's not as simple as just going out and buying a car and then you feel better, right? It can be even more emotional than that, right? You can, you can be at the point where you want to do more, but you feel like it's too late to start. But I can tell you it's not. Don't compare your day one to someone else's day a thousand, right? Similar to how you shouldn't compare your worst day to someone else's worst day. Remember, you're on your own timeline. Anyways, guys, so that's a wrap on this video. We hope that you liked it. And remember, don't forget to check out Neo Secured Card down below. And yeah, as usual, um, make sure you like down below and you subscribe right there in the corner. And if you haven't already seen any of our previous videos, make sure you check them out next door, door. We will be back. You know the vibes. Let's go.